All right, so we are going to be looking at uh, one thing that's been, the Lord has been exceptionally faithful since we've transitioned, and I've had a note in my phone for years of message ideas, I've told you this before, and as I'm preparing for one thing, then I'll read a little phrase, and then all of a sudden the Lord starts speaking things there, and I'm like, whoa, hold on, slow little rains there, so I'll make a note about that, and so... Uh, it's been good. Um, we have notes going out for into April. Um, some of them may not be shared right away, but at least, you know, the Lord is speaking different things. And so, in preparing for something else, I read the phrase that we're going to be looking at today, and that is, the title of the message today is Compassion and Power. And because several times in Scripture, the Lord was moved with, with compassion, and then he moved in power. And so it's pretty cool that, you know, we as human beings, hopefully, are, are compassionate. It's demonstrated to us that we are to be compassionate. Jesus demonstrated that to us. But we can be compassionate, but a lot of times we don't necessarily have the power in which to move in like he did. We, over the last couple of weeks, we talked about how he's Jesus the man, and uh, Jesus, the God. So he had the ability to do some things that maybe others have not, or we can do in his deity. So let's take a look at it. We're going to be in the book of Matthew uh, pretty much the entire time today, with the exception of maybe a couple of references. So let's take a look here. In Jesus, he's actually... It, the examples that we're going to be looking at is there were times where he was moved with compassion with an individual, and there were times that he was moved with compassion with a group. And so let's take a look at that and start in Matthew chapter 9 in verse 35. It says, Then Jesus went out about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, in healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes. And I began to think about that and, and meditate on that. And I wrote the phrase, first he had to see them. And I said, Lord, how many years have I been talking about the Lord sees you? I don't know how many times you, I can't even count the times that I've said it to you guys that the Lord sees you. They got it by now. And he said, hold up. If I continue to impress you to say the Lord sees you, either A, they didn't get it the first time, or B, they haven't heard it yet. So, whoever needs to hear today again, the Lord sees you. Amen. It says right here, he saw the multitudes. And when he saw them, then he was moved with compassion. You know, it's easy just to look at someone, right? You can look at them, keep moving. But do you see them? He looked into them. He saw their needs. He saw their hurt. He saw that they were lacking direction. And he was moved because of it. Why was he moved with compassion? Well, let's look. Because they were weary and scattered. Flip over in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 thinking about that word weary and scattered. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Have you ever felt weary? I'm not talking about being tired. We're talking about being weary. You feel like you've had too much. You feel like 
you can't go on. You feel like you've had enough. To you, he says, come. Peter last week heard the word, come. And I'll give you rest. 29, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Continuing on, they were not only weary, but they were scattered. You ever felt like you didn't fit in? Ever felt like you didn't have a place? You were a round peg in a square hole? He's moved with compassion for you. Why were they weary and scattered? Because they were a people that had a, they were sheep having no shepherd. They didn't have direction. They didn't have protection. We're going to look further into this. The Lord allows on Resurrection Sunday, but the function of a shepherd, direction and protection these people had neither. Look at verse 37, continuing on here. Then he said to his disciples, after seeing these people and being moved with compassion, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I believe Jesus' words hold true more true today than ever. Well, are you going to be willing to accept the call and choose to be one of his laborers? Let's jump over to Matthew 14. Starting in verse 13, Matthew 14, verse 13 says, When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And Jesus went out, and he saw a great multitude, and he was moved once again. But once again, pay attention to what it is you're reading. What is it that Jesus heard? Well, just before this, his friend, John the Baptist, was beheaded. For speaking truth. And Jesus heard it. So you can imagine he probably in that moment wanted to be alone and maybe grieve a bit and reminisce whatever he was going to do. Because these boys were raised together. He departed from there to a deserted place by himself. But we see here that the multitude followed him. And he, when he went out, it says he was moved with compassion for them. He wasn't annoyed. He didn't say, give me some time, leave me alone, I need some space. But once again, it says that he was moved with compassion. And then right after that, he moved in power. How? Because it says he healed their sick. He met their needs right where they were, even in the middle of a personal tragedy. He saw beyond himself. Even if he would have been justified in keeping people at an arm's length and say, you know what? I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to go off by myself. We wouldn't have been mad at him for doing that. He lost a very good friend, longtime friend, family. But he was moved with compassion even in the middle of that. And he met their needs. Continuing on, 
So we see here, verse 15 to 21, we're not going to read, I'll just summarize. But it was getting late, so we, this multitude is there, right? Jesus heals their sick. I imagine he himself is probably pretty tired, maybe even hungry, because guess what? Jesus got hungry. So the disciples say, hey, you know, it's getting kind of late. Uh, maybe we should send these guys out to the villages to go eat, right? Church is over. We'll send people to Dot Border Cantina. Don't go there. Let's send them out to the villages. And Jesus says, you feed them. You can imagine them looking. I, could, I wish I was standing there to see Peter's face. I could just imagine him looking around and being like, feed them. Do you know how many people are here? Matthew tells us at the end of this passage, 5,000 men. Remember we talked about last time, they didn't count the women and children. If you're super conservative and say there's one woman and one child with each of these guys, that's 15,000 people. I don't even care if it's half that. 8,000 people there. Still a lot of people. He says, feed them. So disciples, they, they say, well, all we have is five loaves and two fish. So they go, all right. So he says, take and pass it out. So you can imagine, standing there, distributing this. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many disciples were there? Twelve. Reaching the basket again. There's another one. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is weird. What's going on with this basket? And then they told everybody to have a seat. And they began to break it and hand it out. And as a kid, they always say, right, they broke it in half and a head grew back and tail grew back. That's kind of gross. <laughs> you get a fish head. Thank you very much. I think I'll pass. I'll go to the village. I don't care how miraculous that was. But imagine their surprise. I mean, at first it probably was like, what is going on? But after a while, they're like, watch this! Watch this! Woo! Hand it down, there's another one! Thousands of people. But then it says they ate and were filled. It doesn't say they just had a little nibble. They ate and they were full. And then... The Lord's provision starts with plenty. Because when they were done, each of the disciples got a doggy bag. They gathered it up and they had 12 baskets full. They didn't have a 13th for Jesus. I thought about that. Poor guy. He was hungry too. Maybe Peter shared with him. But I'm grateful that the Lord's provision starts with plenty. In Psalm 37, 25, you're going to put that up. It says, David says, I've never seen the, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants, King James says, seed begging bread. The Lord's provision for you starts in plenty. But in order for that to even happen, what did they have to do first? Walk in obedience. If they would have said, Jesus, um, I know you've been, you're, you know, had a, a tough day. We lost John. Uh, you've been praying for thousands of people. I get it. You're probably hungry yourself. We literally have seven pieces of food here. You want us to feed thousands of people. Let's just send them off. Send them away. Okay? Let's just be realistic here. Let's use logic. Let's send them away. They would have missed out on the miracle. So if the Lord is asking you to do something, it may sound crazy. His provision begins with plenty, 
when we walk in our obedience. If they would have not walked in obedience, they would have missed out on it. And all those people would have as well. So you never know what your obedience, the blessing that it's tied to with somebody down the line of what you're supposed to be doing. He was moved with compassion, and then he moved in power. Let's look at Matthew 18. This is our final example. I love this one because it has some math in it. All you math nerds out there are going to like this. Matthew 18, 21. If you're taking notes through 35, what we're going to be looking at here. It says, then Peter came to him, Jesus that is, and said, Lord, how often shall a brother sin against me? Shall I forgive? And you could just imagine Peter going, watch this, I'm going to be sweet. <laughs> One time, that's, not, that's nowhere near enough. Two, nah, three, Godhead, nah, four, creation, nah, five, five, five's already a number of grace, forget that. Six, six number of man, <laughs> we don't do that. Seven, seven completion, perfect. How about, Lord, we're going to forgive him seven times, right? That's got to be the answer. Perfect, completion, that's got to be it, right? Jesus continues on here. Verse 22. I don't say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 70 times seven. He's probably 490 times. Wait a second. Ever been at the gym and jumping rope? So you got to do it 100 times? <laughs> Pretend. <laughs> Pretend you've been to a gym. <laughs> 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Was I on? Seven, is it 70? Is eight, what number was I on? I forgot. That's the point. That we, don't, we can't keep track. We're not going to keep a tally mark of this is the time that I've forgiven you 427 times. You're getting short to the end of your rope. It's a number that is immaterial. It's not important, the 490. The concept is that we're not keeping track. Let's read here for a moment. Try to not comment if we can. And when he began to settle accounts, this is talking about Jesus. Oh, let me back up, sorry. Uh, 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. 25. But he was not able to pay his master. He's not able to pay. His master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. The servant, therefore, fell down before him and said, Master, have patience with me. I'll pay you all. 27. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him, forgave him the debt. This guy had some power. He was moved with compassion, and then he moved with the power that he had. 28. But the servant went out, found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and laid hands on him. That's what the pastor always says. I laid hands on him, all right. <laughs> and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Does that sound familiar? The exact word that he just used? The exact phrase, have mercy on me, I'll pay you all. Verse 30. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Now, how are you going to earn money to pay a debt while you're in jail? Just, just saying. 31. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved. I'm grateful for that. And came and told their master all that he had done. 32. When his master, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant. 
I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant just as I have had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until you should pay all that was due to him. So your heavenly father also will do to each one of you from his heart. From his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Woo. This is what our heavenly father would do to us if we don't forgive in our heart. Yikes. That's scary. Now. Let's talk about these numbers for a second. I know you're excited about it. Okay. Guy number one owes 10,000 talents. And it was wiped out. He then, moments later, goes and collects 100 denarii. Well, we don't really have those denominations anymore, so I'm going to put it in perspective for you, what it means. Clear it up for you a little bit here. A denarius was a day's wages. A talent was 6,000 days' wages. 6,000. A single talent, if you worked five days a week, didn't take a single vacation, would take you 23 years to earn. Single talent. Now, when I was doing this, I started thinking about not our topic today, but the the parable of the of the talents. And they gave one five and two and one, and they took the guy who buried his. And we always give him a hard time. Oh, he was lazy. He didn't even put it in a bank. He buried it, right? Well, it's twenty three years' wages. That's why he was scared to death. If I hand you 23 years worth of wages, what do you think you're going to do with it? You probably have to think, pause for a second what you might do. I don't want to lose this thing. When especially if it's my money, I'm handing to you, right? It was the master handing him 23 years worth of wages and saying, take care of this until I come back. I digress. Minimum wage in 2020 in Michigan was $9.45. So let's put this in perspective here. With an eight-hour workday, a denarius would be equivalent to about 75 bucks. Okay? One day's wages. The second guy, he owed him a hundred of these day's wages, right? $7,500. That's not something just to be like, oh, forget it. We'll just overlook that. So the very fact that he wanted his money back isn't the issue. It's the fact of how he was treating him after he was just forgiven so much. Watch this. Now is when the numbers get really big. One talent, once again, 6,000 days wages. At minimum wage, $453,000. One talent. I seem, if I recall, looking back at this, this guy owed how many talents? 10,000? You know what 10,000 times 453,000 is? $4.5 billion. Now, this guy who said, I'm going to sell everything I have. I'm going to work for the rest of my life. And I'm going to actually pay this $4.5 billion off. Yeah, right? Sure you are. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Not at minimum wage? Oh, well, then I'll, I'll take the median income in the state of Michigan. Appreciate you setting me up right there. It would take you 60,000 years at the median income in the state of Michigan to earn that, to pay that off. Not even minimum wage. The median income in Michigan, which is $75,000. So we see here what has happened? This guy has been forgiven a debt he would never in literally a lifetime be able to pay back. And yet, he was given an exceptional amount of grace. And moments later, he finds someone that could, $7,500 once again, a lot of money. 
but that is something that is achievable. He probably could pay him back in a few years. Not 60000 And he didn't internalize that grace. He took it for granted. He sped in the face of it. And moments later, he went out and found someone who owed him pennies compared to what, not even, compared to what he owed. And he beat him down because of it. He didn't extend the same grace that was just extended to him. So I'm just going to tell you exactly what the Lord told me to say. Don't be a jerk. Be kind. Show the love of Christ with others even when they're annoying. Entitled or rude. Sometimes we feel justified in our actions because somebody was rude to us. The Bible I read shows Jesus didn't say a word when people were spitting in his face and yanking on his beard. He stood there silent like a lamb before the slaughter. You may be right. You may be justified. So was he. We've all sinned. We've been reminded over the last few weeks, the soul that sins will die. Because of the sin of our, in our lives, we are deserving of death. In the court case of our lives, we stood before the judge and he lifted, listed off the charges against us. We have no defense against these things. He passes down the guilty verdict and prepares to reveal and to give out his sentence. Upon, upon consideration, he decides based on the, the things that you've committed and the wake of a destruction that you've left behind with your sin that you are deserving of death. As he lifts his gavel ready to slam it down, he hears a voice from the crowd. It says, uh, excuse me, Your Honor, may I address the court? And from the back, he sees this man come forward, and he says, I've heard the accusa all the accusations, and, and I respect your verdict. I agree that someone needs to die for these sins. But I've seen the accused. And they're worth something to me. I'm not asking you to reconsider. I'm not asking you for mercy. I am asking, if it pleases the court, that you allow me to take their place. I'm willing to accept your sentence on their behalf. I'm willing to take the weight of punishment for their sin. I'm willing to die in their place. That's compassion. Those are the things that he was moved with. To this day, he still is moved with compassion when he sees you. And we allow He can move, be moved with compassion and then he'll move with power. You can stand and see the salvation of your God. Yes. Sit back and watch in the arena of your life as the Lord shows out. Oh, ex Southern expression. He demonstrates his power in your life. Compassion and power have been shown to you. Pay it forward. Let's stand. Lord, we're so grateful that you still see us even to this day. We thank you for this service today, Lord. 
that you moved, and there were those that were able to come forward, and Lord, as you continue to pray for them and those that maybe didn't have the boldness to be able to come, that what you were speaking to and drawing, Lord, we ask that you would speak life unto them. Lord, reveal to them, Lord, the purposing that you have for them in their lives. We thank you, Lord, that you have a purposing for all of us. Lord, help us to walk into that. And if it's not revealed to us right away, Lord, help us to sit where we are and just grow in you and so that we're ready for the day when you're ready to open that door. Lord, we don't want to be unprepared. Your door opens and we're unprepared because we haven't done our part. So, Lord, help us. Lord, you said, and so what a great reminder. So many of us have said, speak to me. I want to hear the voice of God. And here it is right here in written word right before us. We're grateful for that, Lord. Help us not to take it for granted. Lord, we cherish your word and then all that it says to us. We thank you for your protection. Lord, we pray for those that couldn't be with us here today, Lord. We lift up Sister Joanne. Lord, we ask that you bring healing to her and her leg. Lord, you touch her even right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we send your word and heal her disease. We thank you for that, Lord. Anyone else, Lord, that needs a healing touch, Lord, we ask that you touch them even right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're still in the healing business. Lord, the provision for healing was already there. So we lay hold of it for them in Jesus' name. We have faith believing, O oh God. We're grateful that we can come to you. We can run to you, O oh God. Lord, you are the perfect example of a, a good shepherd. We love you today. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. We love to have a great week.